right, what's up everybody? Okay, so for this week's video, we're gonna talk about how I make my ice cream sandwiches. We got a thing about ice cream sandwiches. Homemade ice cream sandwiches are delicious, but every time you make the cookie and then add it to the ice cream, pop it in the freezer, the cookie becomes really brittle. So you end up kind of biting through the cookie and it smushes out the ice cream, and it's not really an enjoyable experience. What I like in an ice cream sandwich are the chip witches that you get from like 7-Eleven or um, one of the ice cream bars. So the cookie is nice and soft and chewy and the textures are similar from cookie to ice cream to cookie. So in doing a lot of trial and error and research and reading, I found a really great recipe for these ice cream sandwiches from a, a restaurant called State Bird. And so in their cookbook they have a, it's not really an ice cream, it's a semi-fredo, uh, semi but they make a macaron. So there's a two quarter sheet trays of macaron made whole so you don't dot them out. And then you put the ice cream and then sandwich them together. And that macaron freezes really nicely. It doesn't get hard and brittle, it stays nice and chewy, especially when you pull it out of the freezer and it kind of tempers a little bit. So we are gonna make a uh, garden mint ice cream with chocolate chunks and a cocoa macaron. We'll hop over to the video. But the ice cream recipe is from a really great book, in fact the only book that I have really gone to for ice cream recipes, Hello My Name is Ice Cream by Dana Cree. So for this video, we can get both recipes from Hello My Name is Ice Cream and the State Bird Restaurant Cookbook. Let's hop right into it. So here's the wonderful cookbook and our recipe. And we'll talk about the ingredients here. So it's 20 grams of milk powder, 150 grams of sugar, and I like to put vanilla bean pods that I've scraped through in my sugar makes it really nice uh, some really nice cream 380 grams then we have 400 grams of milk 50 grams of glucose and not pictured here is mint and we're gonna do 25 grams of fresh mint this is my stabilizer it's what I use to there's the mint so that stabilizer helps with the consistency of the product and it keeps it from thawing out keeps it nice and solid once it's frozen you can use um, xanthan gum or tapioca starch, corn starch. The book has modifications, but honestly, it's professional grade stuff and it's in commercial ice cream. It's, there's nothing that beats it, it's great. So here we go, we're just measing everything out. I like to put the milk and cream into a pitcher so I can measure the weight on a scale and then I'll add the glucose as well. Now one thing I'll mention, this is a Philadelphia style ice cream, so there's no eggs. It's just milk and cream and other things, but most importantly, no eggs. Into a pot it goes, because we're gonna pasteurize it, cook it beyond 180 degrees. And now we're gonna tear out the scale and weigh the other ingredients. So there's my milk powder, non-fat milk powder, sugar, I always have to strain it because of those vanilla bean pods. And I'll say it's very important to work with a scale. Um, here I've got a scale that goes to one one hundredth of a gram. And for something like really light powders, such as the stabilizer, it's really important to use that. My larger scale wouldn't be able to pick it up. And you need to be within um, a tenth of a gram on these smaller things. So here's spirulina, and I use this for color kind of turn a little bit more green. Color has uh, an amazing influence on taste and flavor. So, you know, if you are eating something white and it's supposed to be, um, you know, if it's supposed to be minty, your brain won't think it's as minty as it should be because um, your brain correlates green with mint. And here I'm taking the mint whole and I'm bruising it. So opening up those cells and um, kind of priming the extraction. So I've got my milk, cream, and glucose up. It's past 180 degrees. It's fully pasteurized. You want to get it to a rolling boil. Now we're going to dump in our sugar, stabilizer, and milk powder. And you're going to want to cook this for two minutes. The importance of cooking this stage is four or three minutes. That works just as well. And the idea here is you want to unlock the proteins, allowing those protein strands to grab onto water. Free water in your ice cream base is the enemy. It'll make it icy. Hot cream, milk base, that whole thing, I've steeped in 
my mint leaves for 30 minutes and here I'm just straining it out. Important, don't wring out anything that you are infusing into your cream. It will get bitter and you're gonna pull out flavors that you do not want. So here we're gonna hit it with peppermint extract and that's really just to kind of round out the flavor and make it what you remember as a little kid when you ate mint ice cream. Here I'm adding the spirulina a little bit at a time. I started with one gram of spirulina and five grams of water to make the paste. Again, this is all detailed in the recipe book. So here you can see the color really changed and it becomes kind of what we're more familiar with when we associate mint with ice cream, that green color. And I'm passing it through a sieve. This is a, a Tammy actually, and it's a really fine mesh. So trying to get out the little particles of stabilizer that have rehydrated and maybe just a little bit too big. I don't want that in my final product. It's a texture thing. So this ice cream by sieving or straining it rather is going to be extremely smooth. You're going to want to put it in the refrigerator overnight and let it cure. So we've done that. I'm pulling it out. A little bit of condensation had collected along the rim and I don't want extra water in my base. It's very important not to have water because that'll turn into ice crystals. So I was just kind of cleaning that from the side, dumping it into a pitcher. I like to do my ice cream batches in 500 gram increments. This machine can handle up to uh, 1,000 grams, but I find that it overwhelms the machine, it takes too long, and I don't like the final result. So 500 grams, and we'll just let it churn. It's a really great machine called the Lelo Musso. It's got an internal compressor, so you don't have to freeze a, a little cylinder. And now we're gonna hop over to the ingredient that we're gonna add, which is our chocolate chunks. So I start with really nice chocolate. This is Valrona. That's a 64% dark chocolate. And I think it's from Madagascar. Here we're adding coconut oil. And the reason why we do that is to um, make sure that the, that the chocolate melts in your mouth as you eat it, especially if it's gonna be in something cold like ice cream. You don't wanna put in just chocolate. It'll become kind of waxy and it won't melt in your mouth and become nice, a nice part of the experience. It'll be weird. So you add a little bit of the coconut oil and um, it just kind of makes it so it melts at a lower temperature. Of course, you gotta add a little bit of salt. So then I poured it into a quarter sheet pan, threw it in the freezer, and we're gonna cut up chunks. It's important to work in batches when you're cutting this up because it will start to melt at room temperature. So I've just cut off myself a little chunk. I threw the rest in the freezer as I'm working on this. Chop, chop, chop. Getting into nice little pieces, you know, maybe quarter to a half an inch. Now I'm temping the ice cream. I like to have it around 13 degrees. That's when I know it's done. And uh, oh, here's our, our macaron. I have a separate video on how I made that. Otherwise this thing would have been too long. So taking it out from the quarter sheet pan and it's important to have the side that was up going down because we're gonna put the ice cream on top. This is the part that's gonna actually touch the ice cream. So we lay that in our quarter sheet pan. We're gonna dump in our chocolate chunks. So for 500 grams of ice cream, I put in about 55 to 60 grams of chocolate chunks. Take it out of the machine. And guess what we're gonna do next? Yep, put it into the macaron. So we're building our ice cream sandwich at this point. Offset spatula is really helpful to help spread everything out. And I don't think I'll show all of the additions here, but I go through three batches. So there's about 1,500 grams of ice cream in here. This is the second edition. You know, in between, I'm throwing the uh, quarter sheet pan in the freezer. So smoothing it out, that way it's nice and even. And we're gonna give it a couple smacks on the counter to level everything out, get some of the air bubbles out. You wanna do that in between layers, that way everything coalesces nicely. And then here's the top part of the cookie. Throw that right on, and there you have it. So it needs to set, you're gonna 
put this in the freezer overnight. That way the ice cream freezes. Oh, here I'm just using a sheet pan to kind of make it level and nice and flat. Very important to have even an even height and thickness of ice cream. And then I'll chop it up in triangles. There you have it. Thanks, guys.